Hello. <clears throat> so in this video, we're going to talk about Hoke how keys play greats. Um, it says here, Jeff Ho. Um, he's also known as Jeff Ho. Um, birth name from Hong Kong, Ho Ka Ki. Uh, his anglicized name in Canada is Jeff Ho. Um, <clears throat> Grace follows the experiences of Ho's family from Wandong to Hong Kong to Canada and the sort of struggles and challenges that his mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother um, experienced over the courses of their lifetimes. Various things between poverty, um, the Japanese invasion of China during World War II, um, economic deprivations, the abandonment by husbands, deaths of husbands, things like this, um, struggles to raise children, and then immigration um, by Ho's mother, him taking him and his brother to Canada to try and build a new life, and then their struggles as immigrants in Canada. Um, my cat is screaming. I don't know if the mic is picking that up, but so um, I, the story itself is is very interesting. It is a genealogical play in that it follows this series of, of individual histories within the same family, right? So each character has their own story, but they're all interwoven as the generations move down. What I find... So on a thematic level, one of the things that's really interesting is that it is very much a Confucian inflected play. And I've I've talked about a couple of other plays by Ho before, uh, and the role that Confucian a Confucian worldview seems to play in his dramaturgy, um, particularly in Antigone Fung, which is which is very much a play concerned with relationships between parents and children. And a lot of the complaints by older characters and a lot of the sort of resistance by younger characters revolves around these questions of relationships. And in Confucian ideology, family relationships and family hierarchies are incredibly important, um, particularly reverence for uh, one's ancestors and for those who are older than yourself. So there's very much a respect your elders ethos that's foundational to um, much traditional Chinese and, and more broadly East Asian culture because of the influence of Confucius. Um, and so a lot of this, the conflict between generations is sort of underpinned by these Confucian values and the, the sort of difficulty of navigating how you sort of behave ethically and responsibly toward your parents, toward your children, etc., etc. There's also definitely an immigration component to this. Um, we have this this portion where the character Ma, who is Hokaki's mother, um, they arrive in um, Ho, Ma, Hokaki, and uh, Ho Chun Yui, uh, Hokaki's brother. They arrive in Canada. And we have the Immigration Man. The character is just called Immigration Man. Um, and he's giving them a hard time about being Chinese. And, and initially, Ma gives him the Chinese documents, which he can't read. 
And he eventually says, I can't even write out your names properly. You're in Canada now. Get English names. And so there is this difficult element to being an immigrant, particularly to a country that speaks a different language than you, that has different naming conventions than your culture does, um, that, that in many ways views the world very differently, and cultures that have elements of xenophobia, as many cultures around the world do, sometimes more pronounced, sometimes less. Um, but we have that that sense of like the struggles of immigrants, um, particularly in the context of things like holding on to their own traditions, their own names, their own identities in a cultural context where the mainstream culture is something very different. So that's the sort of thematic elements. Structurally, um, personally, I'm actually not a huge fan of the structure of this play. Um, I think it's a, basically a good play, but it's not something that really appeals to me for, for two major reasons. One, um, this is a one-person play. Ho himself, in the original performance run, played all of the characters. And there are... Three female characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve male characters. Um, and Ho played all of them in the original run. Some of those, I actually have a very difficult time sort of envisioning how one person plays that role persuasively because they involve interacting with other characters. That being said, again, I'm not a big fan of one-person plays generally. And so for me, as an individual reader or viewer, that just, it doesn't really draw me in. That's purely personal preference. It is in no way a reflection on the actual quality of this play itself. The other element here is that this is really built around music. And you can see on the cover, there's a piano. Um... Ho explains in the notes that this is inspired by the piano sonata form in five movements with the addition of a prelude and a coda. And then he actually sort of explains, you know, try and hold this at the right angle so you can actually see it. All right, there, you can see, you can't read that, but you can see it. Um, he actually explains what all of those elements are. So a prelude exposition of the theme's motifs and in a moderate tempo, moderato. Movement one, sonata form in the home key and in a fast tempo, allegro. Movement two, theme and variation form in another key and in a slow tempo, andante grave. Uh, movement three, dance-like form, scherzo in the home key and in a fast tempo, scherzo. I Probably pronouncing that word wrong. I apologize to any music people out there, but you know I'm doing doing my best. Uh, movement four, moderate tempo in another key, largo. Movement five, moderate tempo in the home key, mestoso. Probably pronounced that wrong as well. Sorry. Coda, a concluding passage that diverts in form and style. And so the play itself is divided that way, like. The first section is listed Prelude Moderato, or is titled Prelude Moderato. Um, I do not know very much about music. And so for me, that form um, doesn't really do much. Like, I appreciate that. Ho is a trained pianist, which is actually a part of the play itself. Like that becomes a big element um, where his mother is working extra shifts to try and pay for his piano lessons because that is what he really wants to do. Um, so I get that this is coming out of Ho's own experience as an artist and a performer. I'm not a music guy in the sense that I don't know much about it. I'm not trained in music, anything like that. It's it's simply not something that I'm sort of personally set up to appreciate. And so it's one of those things that like 
I see where it's interesting, but I don't understand exactly why it's interesting.